Hello once again, and if you don't know already, I'm Scott Florence, and just now I'm going to be talking about some more of the latest science news, and this is only going to be a quick video, because although I'm pretending it's not the case, I am actually ill and I have very little time to do this video. But thankfully this should be the last Sunday for a significant period of time that this is the case. First of all, I'm going to talk about a 19-year-old Egyptian girl called Aisha Mustafa, and that's because she has patented a method of propulsion for spacecraft using quantum effects. And the quantum effect that she's taking advantage of is called the Casimir effect, which in the not too distant future I'm probably going to do a video explaining in more detail, and if I have uploaded it yet, you can click here to go to it. But basically what it's done is it has two mirrors extremely close to each other, and these mirrors are moved very, very slightly in order to interact with the virtual particles that are in between these very close together mirrors. And this can produce a very slight force. And although it's probably not enough to get out of the Earth's atmosphere, it is enough to be able to move about in space. Now this effect takes advantage of something that in sci-fi tends to be called zero-point energy. And I always love it when something in sci-fi becomes the potential for a reality. And next, Venus is going to be transiting the Sun for the final time for about another hundred years. Now this has happened about three or four years ago, but it's not going to be on a regular occurrence because of Venus's inclined plane relative to the Earth and the Sun. Now in the past, Venus's transit has been used to calculate the distance between the Earth and the Sun, and this is done because we know the distance between any two points on the Earth, and it can be worked out or measured. So if someone goes to the north of the Earth and someone else goes to the south, and measures whereabouts on the Sun Venus appears to be transiting across, then the parallax angle can be calculated and from that you can work out the distance to the sun because you have the parallax angle and the distance between the two points that you've measured from. That's all for now and thanks for watching, I ought to have more time next week to do the videos so this probably won't be a repeating issue, but anyway thanks for watching, subscribe if you want to see more of this, like and favourite if you think I've deserved it and comment down below as I try to respond to every comment, but otherwise I will see you next week.